I can move the plunger out and move the plunger in with these limits. And as you can see, it cannot go past these limits either. I'm going to right click and edit my joint limits. I'm going to go to my slide constraint, which I used here. There's a maximum and a minimum set. So I'm going to animate this right, right here. What this means is that the uh, rod here can move 3.78 inches in one direction and negative 1.566 in the other direction. So the zero point is about here somewhere. That's the, the point where those two dimensions are drawn from. So that's that sort of zero point. So now that we know that, we're going to come over to assemble and we're going to come down to motion study. Now within motion study, what we want to do is we want to select the joint that, we, that we're using. So this is a cylindrical type joint and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on it. And as you could see, it brought up actually two degrees of freedom, two different constraints. But we're going to ignore this rotational constraint because we don't really care about that. What we really care about is this linear constraint right here. So I'm going to click on it and you're going to see that it activates in the window. It has its own colored line. And as you can see, there's no slope. There's a slope of zero right now. And just to go over this graph a little bit, this sort of x-axis right here are the steps. The steps you can think about as being time. If you remember from middle school or high school math, the x-axis is always the axis of time because it's independent. But the y-axis here is basically um, the distance. So let's go over an example of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here right to the end of the line at point 100 and I'm going to click on it. And when I click on it, you're going to see distance negative 1.57. Now, if you remember, that's the distance that it can travel. So it starts at negative 1.57 and ends at negative 1.57. What does that mean? It means that it's not going to move at all. If I click play, nothing is going to happen. But let's click on this point and let's change this. Instead of negative 1.57, we're just going to make it negative 1. Now, this has updated, and you can see that there's a slope. This constraint starts at negative 1.57, and it goes up to negative 1. There is a change in the y-axis, and that change is reflected in our model. So I'm going to click on, on play, and you're going to see that it shows you that change. Now, we can also change this and make it say zero. So as you can see, it starts and ends at zero where it cannot move anymore. You could actually see the point where it stops because it started at that negative value, negative uh, 1.57, and it went all the way to zero where it cannot move anymore. Now what I can also do is I can set a second point. So I'm going to set a second point here and instead of moving in a linear fashion, it's actually going to change at this point. It's going to be negative 0.4. When that updates, you're going to see that the line is now not linear anymore. So I can play this from the beginning. And you see that it actually slows down. And the reason is because the change in y over change in x is now different. This line has a, has a lesser than slope. This slope is greater than this slope. So it moves faster because it's moving faster in relative, uh, in, in relation to the x-axis of time. And um, if this is a little bit confusing, this is something you just have to play around with. Um, you know, choose a constraint, add some points, see how it reacts. That's the best way to learn this. Um, so now that we've looked at that, um, th this is like a sort of basic example. Um, you should also know that you can change a speed using the slider. That's the overall speed. You can also change the, um, the mode, which actually moves it from 0 to 100, and then from 100 back to 0, back and forth, back and forth. And you can also just make it continuous. So it's going to go from 0 to 100 to 0 to 100. 
It all depends on the way that you want to actually create your motion study. And that wraps up the basics of motion study here in Autodesk Fusion 360. Uh, let me know in the comments if there are any videos you want to see in the future. And be sure to like and subscribe for more free content on 3D modeling. Thank you.